All right, guys. So I had a few questions this week. Uh, as I was telling people that I was going to be doing a QA and a on gun cleaning, a lot of people wanted to know what products that I use. I had a couple people ask for specifics, like if I use a certain product. Uh, one of them was gunfighter oil. Um, I've not personally used it on my own guns. Um, a lot of the guns, because my job, I work firearms retail and there's a range. So we have to keep up on all of our rental guns. We got like 175 rental guns. So we have a huge, huge selection. So they have to be cleaned regularly. And we use gunfighter oil on our rental guns. Um, we've used Lucas oil, we've used Kellu before. Um, Happy's is really the only one we don't really ever use. Um, it just doesn't have this thick of a viscosity. So gunfighter oil, I know I've seen the perf them perform really well in the rental guns. Um, so yes. Yes, we do use gunfighter oil, um, and I do like it. Uh, I use uh, Lucas oil. Actually, I'm gonna give you guys a little sneak peek at my <laughs> my gun cleaning kit. I actually stole this from my husband, so it's mine now. Um, and that's only because I'm the one who cleans the guns now. <laughs> so the, uh, the oil that I like to use is Lucas oil and it's the Extreme Heat. It's their outdoor line, so it's the same company that makes stuff for cars. So, if they're good enough for cars, they're good enough for my guns, right? Um, let's see, bronze or nylon brushes. I like to use nylon brushes. Um, I don't usually let my guns get so gummed up that I need a more abrasive brush, so nylon works great. Um, I do have, uh, I have a really, really dirty one. And then I have a newer clean one that I got, which I'm really excited for. Uh, it's basically an oversized toothbrush, um, but this end is very thin to get into some of those little nooks. And for what won't work with that, Q-tips. Multiple Q-tips, lots and lots of Q-tips. Um, so, the uh, any ladies in the house, if you don't use gloves when you're cleaning, which I don't like to use gloves, um, I like to just touch what I'm working on. Uh, you can use a set of black nitrile gloves or really anything to protect your hands. Um, I purposely take my nail polish off because the solution will eat away your nail polish like immediately. So I don't even bother. <laughs> uh, barrel brushes. I usually use a Happy's brass brush. Um, I think at the moment uh, I have that in my range bag, so I don't have that with me, but I have my, uh, these come with like every single Glock you buy is going to come with one of these nylon bore brushes, so I'm just using that today because it's what I happen to have. Uh, I do have my brass brush inside my range bag. I have like a little cleaning kit inside of it in case, I don't know, I'm like being a total flake and I'm like, oh my god, I didn't clean my gun and it's like range day. And <laughs> so I do have my brass brush and like a really small supply of just like basics just for like taking care of mud, muck, sand, crud in my gun at the range. Uh, let's see here what we got. If you don't want to buy one of these, you can always just retire a toothbrush and use that for gun cleaning. Oh no. Um, another thing I put in my range bag for my cleaning kit just for like quick stuff is a bore brush. Now this one is for a 22 because mine is obviously in my range bag. Um, but a bore brush is basically an overgrown fluffy shoelace with a thread around it on one end that has basically a brass brush inside of it. So the brass brush is sticking through what would be the shoelace material and you take the plume, which is the weighted end, and you run it down the barrel, and you pull, and you pull, and you pull, and the thicker part is gonna go through, and it's gonna pull all that gunk out. I don't know if you guys can see it, I'm gonna take it up a little closer. Uh, there's, you can see a little bit of the, like, the shiny brass bristles coming out of here. That's gonna like clean all that crud right out of your gun, and it's really, really fast and really easy. Uh, I also have one in my bag for when I go and shoot trap or skeet for my shotgun. It's obviously much bigger because it's for a 12 gauge and the hole is like enormous. But uh, that is what I have just for like quick, quick cleaning, like on the go. Like I'm already out and realized it's cruddy. So I have those on hand um, and always keep a gun oil in your range bag. Um, if your gun is a little bit dirty, it's 
it's not the end of the world. I mean, like, it's so gummed up that the rails aren't moving. Uh, I do, I do like boar snakes. Um, I don't use them frequently, only because I've tried to get in the habit of making sure my gun is clean on a regular, but I do always have them with for those, like, just-in-case moments. Uh, rinse off the boar snake once dirty. Yes, yes, you can, and then, you know, hang dry. Don't, like, throw it in the dryer or anything. Just let it hang dry. Um, you use it again. You can keep using it. Um, you know, because it's the same thing as using your, uh, you know, your brass brushes. Um, you know, the the gunk's all going to be on there. Give it a good rinse off. Let it hang. And if it's really gummy, you're going to want to, like, rinse it before you use it again. Um, otherwise, just putting all that, like, crud back in there. It depends, obviously, on how, how gummy it is, too. It's, it's really nasty. It's like you don't wash your gym shoes every day, but if you're trucking through mud, wash them. <laughs> Um, for rags, I will show you guys, you can buy, like, a big-ass bag of rags, um, and it's, like, gonna cost you a few bucks, or you can take an undershirt and cut it up into pieces. So, men's undershirts work great. That's why I use, uh, all of Tony's old undershirts. I'm like, that one's ready to retire, hand it to me, I'm cutting it up and I'm putting it in a gun cleaning kit. So, use what you got, you know, toothbrush cut up undershirts. Um, you don't need to like go and spend all of your life savings on cleaning supplies, but you definitely want to make sure that you're cleaning them, um, frequently. Not, it doesn't have to be every single time you shoot either. A lot of people think that, you know, oh, when you shoot your gun, it's dirty. It has to be cleaned. I mean, you could totally do that if you want to. That's, that is all on you. And that is a lot of cleaning. Um, if you are not going to shoot your gun so frequently that it gets really dirty, uh, if you're not going to clean it yourself, I definitely would recommend taking it into a gunsmith, um, or bribing a friend with cupcakes <laughs> that knows how to clean guns and ask them to clean your gun for you. Take it in to get a, you know, full cleaning once a year. Um, get it done in an ultrasonic tank. If you know, most gunsmiths are going to do an ultrasonic tank or they'll do a hand detailing job. They'll take all the little parts out. It'll take you past that basic field strip. Basic field strip is going to be slide, your recoil spring, your barrel, and what you can access in the frame. It's not going to be like crazy detailed, but it's going to make sure the gun runs and functions well. Okay, let's get this kit out of the way. Because I have all of my toys here now. So anybody who wasn't with me right when the very first beginning of the call when I started and talked about what I'm going to be cleaning today, I am going to be cleaning Tony's Smith Wesson SD9. Um, this gun is going to take down exactly like a Glock. Uh, it has the same takedown levers here at the front. So I'm going to take it down really quickly. All the guns are going to take down differently. So Glocks and Smith SD9s come down the same, uh, but Smith MPs, they come down differently. They have a different takedown lever. So um, clear the gun, dry fire the gun, relieve the pressure off the slide. This bar goes from one side to the other. So thumb and index finger goes pull down. While you're holding it down, slide will come right off the top and out with the recoil spring. And uh, we have a threaded barrel, so I have to take off the cover first. Lots of threads. And the barrel will come right out. Not as easily on this one because it's a little bit longer, but barrel slide. Recoil spring. This gun is disgusting. <laughs> He's, uh, I think he was waiting for me to do this video and probably purposely didn't clean it, knowing that he could sucker me into washing it if I asked him if I could use his recording area for this video. Yep. <laughs> so now here I am in this nice, comfortable space with lots of room to clean my gun. But none of my guns are getting clean because it was a it was a trade I had to make. So for you guys, because I love you. <laughs> so the frame, you're basically going to take um, the solution I like to use is Hoppies. Uh, you can get a gigantic bottle like this. Uh, you can get they have all sorts of size bottles. So what I usually do and oh no, I forgot to bring a little cup. Two seconds.
All right, guys, my bad. So I usually use a little glass shot glass. I don't have one handy, so I'm just using a little Rubbermaid. Um, I'm going to put my solution into that container. I don't, uh, I don't recommend dipping your brush into the bottle. That is because now your bottle has dirty crap in it. So just a little splash. We're gonna cover this up so we're not inhaling as many fumes. Try and do it in a well-ventilated area because it is potent. Very potent. So, a little bit on the brush, tap off the excess, and give a good scrubbing to everything that you can visibly see. So anything that the brush is going to reach, give a good scrubbing, uh, insides of the rails, down in here, uh, your breech face, which is where your firing pin comes out of here. Give this a good scrubbing down. This is gonna take like a few rounds of cleaning. I can tell already. This is, this is pretty bad. Um, let's see. Make sure everything, all the little nooks, you know, inside here. Everything that you can see and get access to with the end of that brush, you wanna make sure that you're getting it pretty well saturated. And, I'm super excited. I should have showed you guys this at the start. My gun cleaning that. That's a rubber ducky. Because it's bath time for the guns, of course. So keep going. Scrub everything you can see. I can really tell there's like speckles of like tar, it looks like, all over the mat already just from doing this. Um, so it would not be a bad idea. To put something down like a rubber ducky mat if you decide to get creative or you can get a gun cleaning mat from your local gun store or online uh, Brownells has a lot of like really nice gun mats that they have available on their websites brownells.com um, when this gets put on YouTube I will put the description uh, the link in the description for those um, also there's a link in my bio for Brownells so you can go right on there check those out um, the only thing we're not going to really do today is the magazine, um, just because I know for a fact that he cleans those out regularly because he's always changing his base plates out, and when he changes his base plates out, he's also changing the springs and all the stuff inside, so those are all getting cleaned pretty regularly, so that can stay right there, and if it's dirty, that's fine. He can clean it later. everything good scrub down everything is pretty well saturated um, after everything has been washed you're gonna go over it with a rag you're gonna wipe all of that solution off and what was once a beautiful white rag is now going to be absolutely filthy um, a lot of the spaces inside of the slide um, and inside the frame you're not gonna be able to get your finger and like get all that gunk out which is then where you're Q-tips come in hand. Ah, that is a good question, Mike. Um, so I personally am not a huge fan of CLPs and all-in-one cleaners or, you know, the, the clean lubricate protect is what CLP stands for. So I am, I'm one of those girls, I like my cars washed first and then waxed. I like my guns cleaned and then oiled. I'm not a huge advocate for the all-in-ones. Um, I don't like that it leaves that film all over the inside of the gun. Uh, I want my gun, the whole thing to be clean, and then I want only certain points on it to be lubricated. I don't want additional lubrication sitting around the inside of the gun that I was just using for cleaning because there's lubricant in the cleaner. Uh, every time you shoot, all the debris from your burnt powder is going to stick to any moist surface. And ideally, that should only be your oiling points. Um, when the entire inside of the gun has that film of like the lubricant from the CLP because that's you just cleaned the whole gun now the whole gun has that on it um, it, uh, it it makes it so you have to clean it more frequently uh, it's all gonna stick and gum into kind of like walking out of the beach you know you walk out of the water your feet are wet so when you put your feet in the sand the sand sticks to your feet because your feet are wet you can walk around in dry sand all day long with dry feet and the sand won't stick to your feet. Same idea with the inside of the gun. 
So all of that material that's inside, everything that's wet is going to hold on to all of the debris. Um, so I do personally really like the two-step process, that's, which is what I'm doing now. Um, the CLP sounds like a, like a super awesome, like, you know, easy fix. Uh, so you only have to do one thing, which is just the cleaning portion and it lubricates itself, but I don't want the entire gun lubricated. So that's a good question, Mike. I have people ask me that all the time. Um, just not a huge fan of it. Did get another good question uh, right before the live started I had another question come in and it was how frequently do I clean my carry gun versus how frequently do I uh, clean my competition gun now my carry gun obviously I use that every single day I carry it uh, morning noon and night always the same gun so it is against my body against my skin uh, you get skin cells, you get lint from the underside of your t-shirt, you get all sorts of stuff in there. So you do want to make sure that if it's a gun you're carrying every single day, you want to at least do a basic wipe down. It doesn't need to be as like crazy detailed, you know, all the scrubbing and little q-tips and everything. You just want to do a basic cleaning regularly. And I mean regularly like, you know, once a month, um, I would say would be good because all of the foreign materials that your body and your clothes are putting into the inside of the gun are gonna stop it from functioning when you may need it. So always make sure that there's no foreign objects in your gun like lint and fuzzies and dry skin cells. I mean, it sounds gross, but it happens. People, we're, we're, we all have skin, so. All right, the slide took a while to do. Um, but it's done onto the frame. Um, let's see, I think I've already put my Q-tips. I prematurely put my Q-tips away. So we're gonna get a couple of those out because there's a couple spots on the slide that I wasn't really able to get. Uh, cleaning your gun too often is not bad. Um, the most important thing with cleaning your gun is you want to make sure that you're lubricating it afterwards. Um, you don't want to leave your gun dry. Um, it's not like, you know, overwashing your hair where you're stripping it of its oils. So you cleaning your gun, you can clean your gun as frequently as you like and you're not doing any harm to it. Um, let's see. Also, and I think I mentioned a little bit when we first started talking that the difference between like a basic field strip and like full disassembly. Um, the basic field strip is what we're doing now. Full disassembly, I would have to take off the back plate here, remove the striker, striker channel, firing pin is in here. Um, all of that still does need to be cleaned, just not as frequently. So I would very highly recommend taking your gun in if you don't want to learn yourself uh, how to fully strip all the pieces of the gun out um, to take it to your local gunsmith um, to have it like professionally cleaned once a year would be good. Um, this way you're not, I mean, I've seen some of the channels where the firing pin is sitting inside of, like so gummed up and, and nasty, you could not move the spring that the striker was sitting inside of. It was, they're really bad. So you do want to make sure that you're doing like a good full, full cleaning once a year um, is recommended. Uh, my go-to cleaner is Hoppies. I, oh my god, I love this stuff. Um, so when I was little, my mom used to shoot competition, so she would always, you know, clean her guns, and I would help her reload and everything, and that was what she used, um, was Hoppies. So, and it was just like a, like a comfort soup kind of thing, you know, like, like what's, what's like brings me back to my childhood. I've always used Hoppies. I really like it a lot. Um, I've used, um, what the hell did I use? It was like a like a foaming bore cleaner that I had used before, and that was it was cool. I mean, just because it like foams and bubbles, and I was like, oh, I'm super amused. Um, but it wasn't like it made it so I didn't have to scrub as hard. So that was nice. Um, but I like the hoppies. Uh, I mean, you can get a huge container for I don't even know, it's like twenty bucks for that giant container. So it's pretty good. Um, a lot of the product that you're seeing here. You can get at your local gun shop. Uh, most, I can tell you, most every gun shop is going to carry hobbies. It's like 
the most popular brand for like gun cleaning stuff. Oh man, is this bad? All that gunk. Yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there. Uh, yes, Hoppies does have a very strong smell to it. Um, that's, um, you should do this in a well-ventilated area. Um, and when you're not using the container, cap it. <laughs> So we're getting to the barrel. I just wiped on the outside to see like if there was like a lot of buildup and there's not a lot, a lot of buildup. The barrel is, has been recently replaced. This is an apex barrel that he put on here. Um, and I don't think he's had it on for more than a few months. So this is not as gummy, but you can tell it's, it could still use a good cleaning. So the inside's actually like surprisingly really clean, like really, really clean. Uh, the outside had a little bit of gummy stuff on it, so. You like the smell? Yeah, I love, I love Hoppies. That's what I was saying. It's, I feel like a, like a comfort thing. Like, I smell it and I'm like, I'm like, hmm, home. It smells like home. <laughs> I, I would hope not. <laughs> yeah, do not huff cleaning chemicals. <laughs> All right. So I have a couple rods here. Some of these are my long gun rods. Let me find one for my handgun. There we go. I don't know if you guys can hear my cat. <laughs> uh, last time we did one of these a couple weeks ago, she was up on the desk like four times during the during the video, and and she would not go, I had, to, I had to lock her in the bathroom with her food and water. <laughs> but she apparently doesn't want to eat, she just wants to be with me. So, let's try this one. Maybe these are threaded differently. Well, I'll give you guys the idea. You get the rod, you get the brush, the brush goes on the rod. You're going to put the brush in the solvent. You're going to run it through the inside of the barrel, let it go all the way through and then pull it back. You don't want to stop halfway and bring it back because your bristles are bending in one direction to go into the barrel and having to flip to come back is not going to happen. So you do have to let the brush go all the way through the end of the barrel, come back out to fluffy, and then go back in in the other direction. So do not try to push your, push your rod through only halfway and then try and pull it back out. You're going to get stuck. It's gonna suck, don't do it. Uh, after you're done cleaning and scrubbing out the inside, uh, these are gonna come with most of your basic gun cleaning kits, and it is a patch. So it is like that t-shirt material. Uh, some of them you can get like thinner ones. Um, these are Southern Bloom. Um, Southern Bloom makes them a little bit thicker. The hoppiest ones are quite a bit thinner. Uh, cleaning strength, uh, one to 10. I mean, I would put it at like probably an eight because they're uh, like the foaming board cleaners, kind of like scrubbing bubbles for your shower, you know? Like it does the work so you don't have to. So that's kind of nice on like the foaming board cleaners. Um, but as far as strength goes, I've not encountered anything with hoppies that I couldn't like take care of myself with a little bit of elbow grease. So I really like it. And usually not very much elbow grease because who wants to sweat over gun cleaning, right? So after you're all done cleaning the inside of the barrel, you just wanna dry out all of that solution before you put your gun back together. So what I usually do is I set my brush down, whoop, twist it so that it grabs the patch, run it down the barrel again, take it back out. Take that dirty one off, go for another one, putting them through and taking them back out till it comes out clean. This way you don't have any debris. There's no solution. There's no gunk in the barrel anymore. It's completely free of, of any blockage. Um, once you're through with all that, and you'll, you'll be able to see, you'll be able to, I don't know, you guys aren't gonna be able to see this, but I can see it from my end because the phone's bright. There's this beautiful spiraling of rifling on the inside of the barrel, the lands and grooves. Um, you just, you know, give it a little look through, see that there's like nothing funky going on in there still. So. 
<laughs> uh, no, I do not clean guns for free. <laughs> <laughs> Once you are all through cleaning and then getting all the solvent off, drying them off, you're going to reassemble and lubricate while you're doing that. So on the lubrication portion, now that's why I really like the Lucas one. Uh, it's got a needle nose applicator. It is extreme heat, so you can shoot it, let the gun get super hot from shooting lots and lots and lots of rounds, and it's going to still keep that really thick lubricated viscosity to it. It's not going to just like melt off and evaporate off of your gun. So this stuff is made for performance, is really good. I've been using this stuff, you can see it's like halfway gone. I, I think this bottle's probably like a year or two old and I use it on all my other stuff. Uh, for lubrication, uh, I also really, really like Kel Lube. Um, so Lucas Gun Oil, Kel Lube. Um, the only one I'm not a huge fan of is, I mean, if you have it, you have it, use it, but when it runs out, um, you know, get something a little bit thicker, Happy's. Happy's oil is very runny. It's very, um, it almost feels like it's water-based. Like if you put a drop on your finger, you can watch it like dribble off of your finger right away because it's very, very loose. Um, kind of like using um, high synthetic oil for your oil change on your car. So you want to use something that is a thicker viscosity. It's going to last a lot longer on your gun. Um, so that's why I use the Lucas. Uh, Kel Lube is the same. Kel Lube is a really, really thick one. Um, yeah, pinpoint oilers are definitely a must-have because um, there's only certain points on your gun that you want lubricated and you don't want to, you know, you don't want to, like, lubricate the whole inside. You don't want it to be, like, dripping and gooping all over and you have to, like, start over, clean everything again just to get the oil off. So that is a very good point, Mike. Um, for the oiling points on your frame, there are rails. There are one, two, three, four rails that hold the slide onto the gun. Every time your gun slide racks back and forth. It's metal against metal. Anytime there's metal against metal in the movement portion of your gun, you need to make sure that there's lubrication on those points. So, one, come on, two, three, and four. And it is the very, very smallest itty bitty little dabs there, just two tiny little drops right there. You don't need a lot, especially on something that is a good quality oil. You're not going to need a lot. A little bit goes a long way on a good oil. When you are putting your barrel into your slide, let me turn it this way so you guys can see it better. When the barrel goes in, it locks down into place. Now imagine you're shooting it. Every time the slide cycles this way, this point right here is scraping against the barrel and the inside of the slide. So this is the point that when you take it out, it's at the bottom. This little spot here, you can see that there's a big silver line there. And that's from rubbing over and over and over again. So metal to metal contact. One drop of oil right there at that ledge. I usually dab it just so it spreads it out a little bit. And then the excess that's on my finger, right? a light coating around the outside of the barrel because that is also going cycling in and out through the front. So just a tiny little bit right here. One drop will do the whole barrel. After you got this lubricated, you can drop that barrel right back into the gun. Um, and put the threading back on the front for him so that I don't uh, get accused of losing his things because I uh, I probably will lose it. <laughs> I can get it on. There we go. Okay. <sighs> and the reason you want to take, if you do have a throttle barrel, you want to take that cap off first because when you go to take it out, it's too thick. So if you have a throttle barrel on there, remove the cap first. You're never going to get the barrel out of that hole. All right only other point on the gun that I lubricate and I'll show you a little bit closer when you're shooting the gun this here is moving and deactivating your internal drop safety system on a striker fired gun your internal drop safety is gonna be this plunger right here that gets pushed in and allows your firing pin to go forward to hit the bullet when you're pulling this trigger this metal piece here is running against this metal plunger here, metal to metal, 
again, give it a little drop of oil. Hey Jay, how's it going? Now, you can do this with a needle oiler. If you don't have a needle oiler, I would very highly recommend just putting a little bit on your finger and running it over the very top, just so you're not going to let that oil goop down on the inside and accidentally put too much. So I'm just gonna be very careful, just lightly coat the very top of that. And like, it's like a quarter of a dab of oil, just a tiny bit. There's only a little space that contacts other metal, so you don't need it to be like dripping down the inside of the gun. After you get that put together, um, I should have showed you guys the recoil spring. It wasn't actually as bad as I thought it was going to be. I did give it a little quick, like a twist clean in the rag. Um, you can scrub that down with a brush too if you want. To hold the barrel in, recoil spring needs to go in the front end first. Give it a little pinch. Let me do it in the right direction here. There we go. And it will sit even this way. When you do this with the gun, it will stay in place. That's how you know you've put it back together right. Now everything is lubricated, everything is cleaned, everything is ready to go back together. Always, always start at the front rails. I'm gonna start, let me turn so you guys can see it, right here at the back. Everything's gonna slide in, kind of like a puzzle piece, and get it all the way to the back. Reassemble it. Anytime you take your gun apart, do a function test. Make sure, even if you're just taking your slide off and putting it back on, make sure that it goes off when it's supposed to, when the, with the pull of the trigger, no, it clicks, not goes off. That when you reset the slide, it also resets the trigger, and that when you have an empty magazine in, that it locks open as it should. Make sure that everything functions the same way now as it did before you took it apart. That is the last time that you'll want to find out that you put it together wrong is when you need it. So always do a function test anytime you take your gun apart.